Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be doing another video with you, and we're going to be painting this ceramic snail. So all of you who have picked up the kits at the library um, will have five colors of paint. And what we're going to start out with is the darker of the browns. It's called medium mocha. It's a mako color. And we're going to be painting his entire body with the brown. And then when we finish that, we're going to paint the entire shell with the dark green, including the inside. I did some on the inside also. Get these papers out of here. Okay. So, um, yeah, I knew you have your brushes from previous classes. So I believe that you should all have these. Now, I gave you a new one of these in the kit. This is the dry brushing brush. You are not going to use this to do any painting with right now. And throughout the project, you will not be washing it or putting it in water. So right now, you can use either one of these brushes. I prefer the bigger one. But if you want to edge with the smaller one, you're fine. You're going to be painting the brown all over his entire body, including the bottom here. I, I, you could start on the bottom. I usually tell everyone to start on the bottom and paint it, even including this ridge that goes around his body here, this circular ridge that's going around his body, that's in the brown. So the brown on the body, the green on the shell, and then we're gonna be dry brushing on top of it. This is the dry brushing brush. Do not put it in water. This brush, you'll put in water as soon as you finish working with it. You can wash it, okay? So let's start. We'll start on the bottom. And you need a palette to put your paint in. I have a palette. You can use a paper plate. You can use a tile. You can use a piece of foil. And just paint a nice solid coat. The color is pretty solid. You don't have to worry about doing a second coat because we're going to be putting so much color on top of it. So right now, just get one coat. So you have the solid coverage. You get pretty good coverage on that. And this brush really goes pretty far. Now, if you get it where the green is going to go, I wouldn't worry so much because the green is a pretty dark color and it should cover the brown. And the way I do the edging is I just put a little bit on the tip of the brush. I put my brush down a little bit away from the edge and then kind of use the square edge of the brush to edge around. Okay? But you can use the smaller brush too if you're more comfortable with that. Okay? So nice smooth coat. Remember you, your paint has to be nice and smooth when it goes on. This lip here I did also in the brown around the opening in the back. I did that in the brown. I have to look to make sure because I don't remember what I did. When you do the inside, it's, it's a little hard to get inside, so you do as much as you possibly can. Now, where you're going to have a little more difficulty, and I found I did another one the other night in another class, is you have to really pounce it into these holes because when it's wet, you can't really tell that you've missed so many of those spots, but when it dries, you will see the little white spots. So push it in, wiggle it in back and forth. And when it's dry, you might have to go back and look at it again and make sure that you have all of those holes covered because those are the crevices. And the crevices, when you do dry brushing, the crevices stay in the darker color. So if you don't get the brown in there, they're gonna stay white and you might see them. You know, I, I don't know if you could see on this one. Let me see if I can show you on this one. You could see the little holes remain in the dark, darker color. So if they're white, they, they may show. So make sure you get the brown in all those crevices, okay? So put a good amount of paint in your brush when you first start out, and that will help you get into all those little spots too. And like I said, I'm, I'm not 100% neat because I believe the green is almost like black. It's a very dark color, and it will cover the brown if you get it up on the shell. Eventually, you have to be neat when you do the shell, then you have to be neat. I always go back and forth and make sure my paint is nice and smooth because when you dry brush, any ridges that you leave in your base coat will be accented by the dry brushing. Okay. Including his antenna, which we had a little discussion about the other night, and they're called tentacles. Somebody looked it up. I think I'm correct. And... I had a couple of people put eyes on them. I mean, you could do it with the green with the back end of the brush later on. You could put eyes on it. I didn't. I kind of like them cutesy. Because any, any piece that you do in ceramics is not exactly how the animal or, you know, the plant or whatever you're doing really looks. It's, it's an adaptation of it. It's, it's just, you show creativity. We used to do snails when I had my store. 
We do pink crystal glazes on the shells and pink bodies and purple bodies. So you don't have to do it exactly as a snail looks because they're really ugly snails. But if you want to do eyes, you can. Like I said, the back end of the brush. But you do that at the end. You don't do that now because dots stay wet for a long time. And if you put a dot on there now, you're more than apt to put your hand in it and smear it all over the place right now. So that would be the last thing that you do. And I hope you all have paper towels out because when we dry brush, you really need the paper towels. We'll be putting the color in the brush and then taking it out of the brush on the paper towel. This is a good dry br brushing brush. I've just found this supplier who supplies these. And what happens with dry brushing brushes is they wear down very fast because they take a lot of abuse on the bisque. So this is very has very long hairs. I mean, it's large, but it's great for this piece. But it has very long hairs, which is great. So it should last you a while. The, the thing is, I'll show you how when we wash them, how you really have to wash it at the end of the night of the day, whatever you're painting. You have to make sure. When I tell people don't put it in water, they'll come back the following week and say, well, you told me not to put it in water. But no, you have to wash it at the end of your painting because otherwise it'll be stiff and you won't be able to use it anymore at all. I just mean just do not wash it in between colors. We're gonna go from one color right to the next color in the brush when we do the dry brushing. Okay, so now I have my first coat on. Now, you, you know, you, you're on a video, so you can pause the video and not work as fast as I do and take your time with this. And I've got the one coat on. And I'm not going to be as perfect as you can be on yours and go back and check. But as it dries, you'll see little white spots popping up. And then just go back and push the color into those spots. This, if it's not solid coverage, like I could see through my color a little bit, don't worry about it. We'll be putting orange over it on the inside. Okay, so now this one you want to wash. And now, like I said, you never bang it in the bottom of the bowl. I go back and forth with the brush and then squeeze out the color and dry it before you go into your next color. And then I didn't wash it that well, so it should be washed really well. And you can go to the sink and do that. Okay, so now I'm putting the green out. I'm gonna start the green on the inside, and it's, it's a little difficult to get the green on the inside. You do as much as you possibly can get. It's just basically, when you look at it from the outside, you don't wanna see all that white. So you get as much as you can right in this area. Okay. But if you look on that inside edge, I don't think you can see it like right up against his body. I don't have any white on there. I mean, I don't have any green on there. It's white. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole inside. Did you get the idea that? You just keep painting that and get around as much as you can possibly get. Where it's more important to get is in the circles. So we'll paint the shell and then maybe the smaller brush might work better to do in those little circles because if you have white, you're going to see that. And again, you can use your smaller brush to do your edging here. It might work better. What I'll do is I'll do the brunt of it with the big brush and then I'll go back and take the smaller brush to do in those circles and do my edging if I didn't get a good, do a good job with the big brush. It's hard to use this big brush to do the edging. Now the, the green and the brown I gave you in bottles, so you should have plenty because I haven't even used a well, one well of the brown. You see the brown that was filled? I didn't even use that whole thing. The green I may use a little bit more because you're doing inside and outside. But you should have plenty if anyone doesn't have enough paint and you've purchased a kit, you can always just email me and I'll make sure to get you paint somehow or other. It's just such a guesstimate on my part. I always try to see when I do my sample, try to write down how much I use. And I did some kits for another library of ducks and I did 50 kits. One person told me they didn't have enough paint. So she, she must have really you know globbed it on. Everybody's hand is different but I don't want anybody to run out of color. I mean, you can, you, you can go to Michael's and you can always do that also if you, know, you don't want to let me know. And I'm sure a lot of people do have acrylics at home. It's just water-based acrylics. Right now, today I'm using Mako. Mako is a very big company of making paints. And I use Gear a lot. Gear and Mako paints and, and some Duncan also. 
Now people ask me about sealing this. You can use uh, a spray like Krylon. You can use, uh, I mean, if you have Duncan spray, Mako doesn't make the spray anymore, which I love their spray, but now I'm using Duncan. There's also a paint on sealer because you, you don't want to spray in the house. And if you don't want to go outside and spray, you can use a paint on sealer. It's a liquid sealer. Now I know Amazon carries it and it is more expensive than going to Michael's and see if you can get a paint on sealer. But you can also use Thompson's water seal, like decking sealer. And you could put it up on the inside and the outside because if you put anything on the outside, you should have it sealed all around. It's very important to have it sealed all around so that you know, bisque is porous, this white bisque is porous, and it'll absorb the moisture. So if you have one side sealed and not the other, that's not good. You need to seal both sides. Okay, so Thompson's water seal works, or any other kind of sealer for acrylics. Okay, I'm almost done. Actually, I said I was going to need more green, and I really don't even think I need more in my well. So you should have plenty because those little bottles I gave you are more than double the size of this well. So you should be good. And again, it doesn't have to be 100% solid. When I say not solid, you have to have no white spots. But if you could see through your color, you're okay because we're putting color over it. But you just base coat so that you don't see any white. You know, I was able to do most of it with the, the big brush, but I have experience. So like I said, if it, you can't do that, just go back to the, just go to the smaller brush that you have. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that now so I can get into these little holes. So this is the smaller brush and I believe you have this size brush also. Now, if you go on to the brown, like I just went on to the brown, so I'm gonna wash my brush, dry it out on the towel, and while the green is wet, I just scoop it across where I went out of the lines. Just keep cleaning the brush and taking it off with the brush and a little bit of water. And it took it right off. I had it on this edge here, and as long as you get it before it dries, you can get it right off. So now I'm gonna do my edging and get into all those little circles. And you could look at the circles from one direction and you'll say, oh wow, they're all covered. And then you turn it around upside down and you'll say, oh wow, look at all I missed. So look at it in all different, all different directions. When I turn it around now, I see my little, uh, the little holes in the, in the brown that I told you. I don't know if you could see them. You see those? Can you see my little white spots? It's, I see them on the side there. That's what I was talking about. So you have to try to get those covered because you will see them. So this brush works well in the holes. And then also for your edging. Okay, like I said, you, you can do a better job because you can take your time. I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me just pushing color into the crevices I want to move on so that you can see how to do it and you can always pause the video in between and, and you know and go back to it any time. So I'm gonna wash my brush. Now, the reason I didn't go right to the dry brushing on the brown is you want your color to be a little dry before you try to do dry brushing on it. Like the green is still a little wet and when you see that shiny look on it, that means it's still wet. So that's why I went from this to this and now we'll go back to the dry brushing on the brown area. So you have two oranges there, two different um, color oranges. You have uh, light umber and you have orange rust. So we're gonna do light umber on all the parts that have the little holes, the little the part of his body that's holy. <laughs> um, this rim that goes around here 
the circle around his body, I left that. I didn't paint that, I didn't dry brush that, and it works to your advantage because if you dry brush up against his body, you're gonna get the color onto the green. So when I dry brush, I left this rim going around in the base coat of the brown. So it also gives you a different uh, look with the colors also. So, you know, it will have the light orange on here and then the brown will remain on this circle part going around. You don't need to do the light orange on here. You can if you want, but we're gonna be doing the darker orange on here. So the way to do that is, you know, you have those little pods so you don't have to put it in a palette like I am. You could work right from there. You do not want a lot of paint on your brush. You wanna make sure that you just tip just tip the brush in the color and you always wipe it on the paper towel and blend the colors all around. Blend the brush in all directions so that the paint is evenly distributed on the hairs of the brush. That's very important because people dip and they just go like this. You don't want to do that. You want to twist and turn and make sure that you get it evenly dispersed and that gets the color out of the brush and distributes it properly on the brush for the dry brushing. And when you dry brush, when you have crevices, you use the side of the brush. Point in is going to fill in the crevices. So we're going to use the side of the brush. And I'm just going to show you this little bit that I just did. And you just keep going over it. Even when you think there's no color in the brush, there is. Do you see that spot? I don't know if you can see that, that I just did right there under his uh, tentacle. Okay. When I dry brush, every time I put the paint in the brush, I stop and I wipe it out. And when you do dry brushing, you do it at least two or three times. Now twist your brush around because there's color on the other side of the brush too. Dip, wipe. And if you make a blob and you get too much on there, you just go back and you put your darker brown back on it again and you let it dry really well before you go back to the dry brushing. Okay, so we're gonna take this all the way around in the back also on this top edge. And then on the back of his body. So I'm using the side of the brush, twist the brush around, use the other side of the brush. I think you can see that now, can you see that? The difference in there? And that's only one coat. I usually do it at least twice. I put a little bit up on, on the tentacles. I keep thinking I'm going to say the wrong word. Um, <laughs> you could put a little of the lighter orange up there, or you could leave them the dark brown. You don't have to. So now I'm going to go around it one more time. I mean, I put nothing. You see that little, little bit of paint that I used in there right here? It's like nothing. You use nothing when you do dry brushing. I have more green all over my hands from the shell still being very wet. Let me just clean my hands a little. I'll go over it one more time. And the color is much sharper the second time around. And when you dry brush, when you first put your brush to the bisque, light hand, hold it lightly. Uh, a teacher once told me years ago that he should be able to come across and pull the brush right out of my hand as I'm dry brushing. Because if you hold it tight, you're gonna press harder. So hold it loosely so you're just kind of dusting the surface. mess. <laughs> so now we're going to go into the orange, the darker orange. And when we go into the darker orange, we are not going to wash the brush. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of this. Where is it? Here we go. It's called orange rust. I have a tendency to use the same colors over and over again that I, I really like from Mako. Okay, so I just put a drop and now you clean your brush with the next color. I'll push this up here. So this will change immediately because you're not changing the shade of the color too much. But when I go from um, a completely, I always work from light to dark so that my brush will gradually get darker because once it's dark to go back to the light is very hard to do. So, but I clean my brush with the next color. So I might put that color in there, wipe it out, and then do it one more time. And that gets rid of your previous color. You see how fast this was the previous color? Well, here, yeah, that was the previous color and this is the new color, okay? So it really wipes out very fast. 
So now when you're on a flat surface like this, it's a little harder to dry brush because there's no crevices. So it's, it, you can kind of pounce it with the side of the brush and you need to do this two or three times to get better even coverage. And if it's very wet in a spot, it may not cover, so then you really have to let it dry. And it's more blotchy. Just keep twisting your brush and blending it and look at what, what you're doing. Don't look at the brush. Look at the surface and how the color is coming out on the surface. Okay, so now I did it all the way around here on top of the green that I have there. Okay, always hold your paper towel because if you don't, you have a tendency not to get enough paint out of the brush. And we're going to do it underneath the detailed area. The detailed area is the part with the holes. We're going to do it underneath this little rim. You don't have to do the bottom, but underneath his um, tail going all the way to the back. Where are we? There we are. And then we're going to go around the back. Underneath, just underneath, not with the pot with the holes. And I have not dipped for more paint. I think maybe once or twice to go around this whole piece. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it again. Get a little more over here. And the, the more that you do it as you go around, I told you hold it loosely, but as you run out of paint in the brush, then you can bang it a little bit harder. So I'm going to do it a second time. And the second time gives you a lot better co color. I'm just blending it with my brush, going around and blending it. I want you to see the difference. Can you see this top part? See the top part, how it has more? The bottom has only one coat. So you could do it two and three times until you like it the way it looks. You can see this one has a lot more orange on it. So the more you go around, but it's all dry brushing. And pounce with the side of the brush, not straight down with the side of the brush. All right, so you have the idea of that. I'm not gonna go all the way around again, but that gives you the idea. Now, we're gonna go to the green. Now you have this one, this is called Country Sage. And I'll just work out of the cap. I think I'll be okay. So again, you're not going to put your brush in water. You're going to take the green, you're going to put it in your brush, and you're going to wipe out the previous color. Look, the color of the orange is gone. But again, I'll do it a second time so that it really gets the orange out of it. Okay? So now when you do the shell, look, I got green all over this head over here. Okay, you're going to go against the grain. The grain is going this way. So you want to go against the grain. So that means you have to rotate your brush as it goes around the circle of the of the snail. So the lines are going this way. You're always going in the opposite direction. See that? All right. Opposite direction. This brush is great. Even when you think there's no more paint in the brush, there is. See, in the beginning, I had quite a bit of paint in my brush, so I go back and I keep blending it. Now I know there's not a lot in the brush. What I'm doing is this, I'm sweeping. Okay, but I do it fast. And even when you think there's nothing in that brush, I still got dry brushing out of it. Again, light hand, start out with a light hand when you first dip into the color because if you have too much color in the brush, you won't have a big blob if you don't press until you get to the feel of how much is in the brush. And then you can press a little harder as you go around. Twist your brush around because it has paint on both sides. I'm going to do the front here one more time so that you can see it get a little sharper with the second coat. Okay, so now lightly, light hand. I always start out with a very light hand and I don't go in both directions when I start out. 
I just want to get the feel of how much is in the brush. Now I have a little extra in the brush this time, so I'm working very lightly, very light hand, hold the brush very lightly. But I want you to see what a difference it makes, the second coat. Now you see the second coat here, but not here. So it's your piece, you're the artist, so you can put as many coats as you want on it, and when you like it, you stop. There's no you know, saying you know, what, what's right or wrong. Now, another thing that I did do to this one is I took a little extra of the green at the end and I went around the holes and just dry brushed the holes that they stood out a little bit more. Can you see that? I did it up here, these two. Just accent the holes that are up there. Okay, you can do it on all of them. Everything you do is just adds a little more character to the piece. Okay? And that's about it. He's done. Now I give, I give you little butterflies, and you could put it wherever you like. Some people put it in the hole, and you could just put it in there. If you open up the, it's, it's got a wire in there, so you could just open it up and just put that in there. But remember, if you're going to be putting it outside to seal it, uh, it and always take in your ceramics below 32 degrees. They should not stay outside because, you know, they don't expand and contract with the weather. Um... I brought over a couple of other pieces that I wanted to show you. This, this turtle was another piece that I have been doing. Look at him, isn't he adorable? With um, his little baby climbing on his back. Isn't he cute? And I have the same kind of colors as I told you. I love that dark green and I base coated his body with that dark green and then worked from there. The dark green is even under the shell. So that's a cute piece. And another piece that's been very, very popular for me is I know you, I think you've done gnomes already, but look at the patriotic gnome. I have sold 80, 80 kits of these patriotic gnomes. He's so popular. So you have my email. If anybody's interested in anything, just email me, and I'll put everything together for you. And um, I don't know. I think that's it. I just would like to thank you all again for taking my class. I really appreciate it. And like I said, send me pictures. I never get to see pictures of the finished pieces, and that's the one disadvantage of, of working with YouTube and Zoom classes that I do is I don't get to see the people, and I don't get to see the finished pieces. So if you want to send me a picture of your finished piece, I, I would love to see it. Again, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your summer. And I hope to see all these snails in the neighborhood. Thank you again. Bye-bye.